Hey there, we're going to start with our longer number subtraction, and we will begin with subtracting with some tips and tricks similar to those that we used with addition. So if you perform subtraction operations in your head, you may find it convenient to subtract a round number that's a little easier to work with and then add or subtract the remainder. So for example here, if we're doing 2,789 minus 496 in our head, it's probably easier to think of 496 as 500 instead. But if I subtract 500, I'm subtracting an extra four. So I need to add four in the end so that I balance it out and make sure I actually did subtract 496. But again, I can subtract 500, those extra four, and then add those extra four in to compensate. When I do that, um, remember, if I'm looking at this and doing 2789 minus 500, 500 and 789 is really what we're looking at, those portions. And even more specifically, you're really looking at the seven that's here in the hundreds place and the five here because these are zeros. So 2789 minus 500 is 2289. And we still have to add in that four because we have to compensate for having subtracted more than we actually were supposed to. And so we add in the four and 2289 plus four gives us 2293. So we can try these examples here, 6876 minus 395. 395 is pretty close to 400. It's five away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 6,876 minus 400. But if I subtract 400, I subtracted an extra five. So I took away an extra five. So I need to add five back in to compensate for that extra five that I took away by doing minus 400. Now, when I do that, I'm going to start by doing 6,876 minus 400. Again, I'm really just looking at 876 minus 400. Everything else is really staying the same. So eight minus four, because those are each in the hundreds place, and I'm really doing like 876 minus 400, and that gives me 476. So 6,476 is what I get out of these first two numbers. And then I still have plus five. 6,476 plus five. When we add five to that, we get 6,481. Now we will look at 5,962 minus 604. So when we do this, 604 is pretty close to 600. So I'm thinking, okay, 5,962 and then minus 600, but I haven't subtracted enough this time. So I need to subtract an additional four to make sure I subtract the full 604. So this time it's over the 600 that I'm going to subtract. So I need to continue subtracting to make sure I subtract enough. So 5,962, if I subtract that minus 600, I'm again really looking at 962 minus 600. 962 minus 600 is 362, so 5,362. And then we still have minus another four. When you do 5,362 minus four, you get 5,358 as your answer. So now we are going to look at long subtraction. So with long subtraction, this is a safe method to avoid small mistakes, which you might make if you solve the subtraction operation in your head. So long subtraction will be when we take one number and we write it on top of the other number so that the digits are in columns and specifically the ones digits are lined up vertically, the tens digits, the hundreds digits, so on and so on. So that's from right to left. Now, many numbers of the, any length, including decimals, which we'll look at in a little bit, can be subtracted this way. So let's take a look at these three examples here. 477 minus 327. So we're going to start by writing out 477 minus 327. Notice they each have three digits. We just line up the last digit, the middle digit, and the first digit. So now we can go ahead and look down each column. So we have the ones digits, we have the tens digits, and we have the hundreds digits here. So we are going to start with the ones digit on the furthest 
right, we will start with those digits. So seven minus seven is zero. So we'll put a zero right here. Then we go ahead and move on to the tens column. That's seven minus two, which is five. And then four minus three, which gives us one. So our answer on this one is 150. On number two, we have 3,861 minus 429. So we will start with this 3,861. And we will subtract 429. Notice when I line this up, I'm going to put 429 so that it is in line vertically with its corresponding digits above. So the nine is in the ones column, the two is in the tens column, and the four is in the hundreds column compared to our original number. Now again, we will still be looking at our ones column. We will look at our tens column, our hundreds, and then we do have a thousands column on this one with only one number in it, which we'll talk about when we get there. So to start, one minus nine. Unfortunately on this one, it's not as straightforward as the first example we looked at because one minus nine would give us a negative number. So what we need to do is we need to borrow from the number to the left of the column we're working with. So for example, this one, we are going to cross out that one and we are always going to add 10 to it. So one plus 10 is 11. So we're actually going to put 11 here so that we can do 11 minus nine. However, we can't just change that to 11 and move on and now do six minus two. We have to consider that we took those 10 that we added to one from somewhere. So what we did was we took from that six and now it is a five because that six, that 61 essentially, we took out 10 from that 60, that six is in that tens place, which is like a 60. And so we drop that down by one digit which accounts for bringing the 10 ones over to the ones column. So again, that one, when we crossed it out to become 11, that six dropped down to a five to account for that borrowing. Now we have 11 minus nine, which we can do at this point and get a positive number. That will be two. And then we move on to our next column. So now we have five minus two. Five minus two gives us a positive number, three. So we're good there. Then we move on to eight minus four. Again, we do get a positive number of four. So we are good there, no borrowing needed. And then on this next one, we have three. With three, there is technically, you can think of a zero here or just with it being empty, we can just bring that three down. But either way, three minus zero or just bring the three down since it is a blank spot there below it you get a three as your first number. So our answer for this one is 3,432. All right, and then on number three, we have 3,042 minus 396. So again, we have four digits and we are subtracting 396, which is three digits. So we'll line it up just like we did on the last one. And then we have our columns. So we have our ones column, we have our tens column, we have our hundreds column, and we have one number in our thousands column. So we will start with two minus six. That will give us a negative number. So we have to borrow. So that two gets crossed out and becomes a 12. But to make it a 12, we borrowed from this four. So that will drop down to a three. So now we can do 12 minus six, 12 minus six is six. And then we can move on to our next column. Now, three minus nine, it's not like the last one where we can just go ahead and everything works out from there with subtraction. We have to look at this three minus nine and realize that three minus nine is a negative number. And so we have to borrow again. So we have this three and we are going to cross that three out and it will become a 13 so that we can subtract nine from it. However, with the next column, that zero, we can't borrow from zero. We'll go into the negatives if we subtract one from zero like we did on all our other rounds of borrowing. So then we look at this next digit with it. So 30, we can borrow from 30. So I'm going to cross 30 out and that is going to be 29. 
And that works because we have that empty spot here. We've just got the three here. So we can look at just this 30 minus this three or whatever would be down there. And so now we are able to do 13 minus nine and then eventually we will do 29 minus three in this case. So 13 minus nine, when we do that, we get four. And then we can move on to the next column. And when we move on to the next column, we have 29 this time minus three. 29 minus three is 26. And so our final answer on this one is 2,646. Now we are going to look at what happens when we're subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number. All of the examples we've looked at so far, we start with a big number and we subtract a smaller number because that's how the process works. So when we have it the other way around, we can still use that same process. However, we are actually going to always take the bigger number and subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. And we just have to remember if we start with a smaller number, and we subtract a bigger number, our answer is going to be a negative number. So we need to remember that our answer will be negative. So on this, instead of writing 642 and minus 898, we are going to write it 898 minus 642. So we are going to take the bigger number and subtract the smaller. And then I'm going to make myself a note towards the bottom so I remember my answer is going to be negative. So I need to make sure that whatever I get, when I write my final answer, I get a negative version of what I actually got. So we're still going to subtract the same way. If we need to borrow, we borrow, so on and so on. So we look at each column starting from the right and moving to the left. So eight minus two, when we do eight minus two, we get six. When we do nine minus four, we get five. And when we do eight minus six, we get two. And we have to remember our answer is not 256. It is actually negative 256. Finally, we are going to look at long subtraction with decimals. So for long subtraction with decimals, we are going to look at the same process that we used when we did long subtraction with whole numbers. However, we have to make sure that we line up the decimal points whenever we subtract. Otherwise, we will get an incorrect answer. So if one of the numbers includes fewer decimal digits or numbers after the decimal point, um, we can fill in zeros and we'll look at that here in a second. Additionally, remember that in order to assess decimals, you have to check which number is greater. And that's by looking at the whole part, the number to the left of the decimal point. So what we just talked about a second ago, we always want to subtract the bigger number minus the smaller number. So what this is saying is in order to figure out which decimal is in fact bigger, we look at the part to the left of the decimal point. So 49 versus 2. Obviously, 49 is bigger. And we so we are already doing the bigger minus the smaller number. So we are going to keep it in this order. If it had flipped around, then we would still do 49.25 minus 2.783, but we would have to keep in mind our answer would be negative like the last example we did. So here, 49.25, and then we are going to subtract 2.783. So our decimal points have to line up. So 2 will go to the left of that, 783 will go to the right of that. So typically we line up the last numbers, then the second to last number, so on and so on. But with decimals, we line up the decimal points. And when we have an empty spot like this, we can put a zero there, just like you could put a zero here if you wanted to. So looking at that, we are going to go ahead and subtract down the columns. So we will look at zero and three, five and eight, two and seven, nine and two, and then four is on its own over here. So starting with zero and three. So zero minus three is a negative number. So we are going to have to borrow to make this zero 10 higher, so a 10. When we make that a 10, we have to cross out that five and make it a four. 
We're borrowing from that five. So now we can do 10 minus three, 10 minus three is seven. And then we move on to that next column. So four minus eight will be a negative number. So we can't do that. So we are going to cross that four out and turn it into a 14. When we do that, we have to borrow from the two so that we are able to turn that four into a 14. So that two drops down to a one. And then we can look at 14 minus eight. Now 14 minus eight is six. So we can go ahead and put a six here. Next, we look at one minus seven. One minus seven will be a negative number. So we cannot do that. So we will borrow in order to change that one into an 11. So that one turns into an 11. But in order to do that, that nine has to drop down to an eight. And now we can go ahead and do 11 minus seven. 11 minus seven will be four. And at that point, we can move on to our next column. In our next column, we have eight minus two. We are able to do that. That is a positive number. Eight minus two is six. And then we can look at our last column. So with our last column, we have four minus zero or just bring down the four. Either way, whether you put the zero there or not, you have four when you bring it down. Now, the last part of this we want to look at is our decimal point. So because we were subtracting decimals, we need to check to see where the decimal points are lined up and then follow those down, bring it down to your answer to be in that same spot vertically. So 46.467 is our final answer for this problem. So in summary, we looked at three main topics in this lesson. We looked at subtraction and the tips that we could use where we could round numbers that we are subtracting and then again, compensate by adding or subtracting back that remainder in order to be able to do the mental math with subtraction problems. We additionally looked at long subtraction process. We looked at the long subtraction process with whole numbers and we looked at it with decimals as well. So remember in both of those methods, whether it's a whole number or a decimal, we cross out and show borrowing to keep it all organized and to make it a little bit easier to follow our work. With decimals specifically, make sure you line up those decimals and make sure you fill in zeros at the right end if necessary. At the beginning, it's up to you if you want to fill in those zeros or not. But at the end on the right side, like on this last one, this zero at the end was necessary to be able to subtract. But again, that first zero was up to you if you wanted to put that there or not. So hopefully this has helped a little bit with subtraction and all of the uh, procedures that you would use to go with long subtraction or mental math long subtraction.